Imagine having a crazy stalker for five years who can't handle rejection and does anything possible to make your life a living hell. Sandra Bearfield worked as a waitress at Bigford's restaurant in Medford, Massachusetts. She was loved and adored by many. Unfortunately for Sandra, she was met with a customer that would soon become obsessed with her. In 1996, Stephen Caruso was seated in the section Sandra worked. The light chatting continued until 1998, when Stephen asked Sandra to go out with him to the movies. Sandra declined the offer. However, Stephen continued to sit in her section, but he would just stare and smirk at her without uttering a word for hours. Some days he wouldn't even make an order. Understandably, Sandra was creeped out. She told her manager she was uncomfortable with Stephen sitting in her section, and her manager asked him to move to another section. On September 27, 1998, Sandra found that someone had slashed her tires overnight. There were no eyewitnesses to the incident, and no one was charged. Then, in the early morning of September 30, 1998, while Sandra was lying on her couch, she heard a tire slashing. From her second floor window, she observed the apparent perpetrator walk away from her car. He was dressed all in black and wore a hood, but she could not see his facial features. Fearful that the vandalism of her car would continue, Sandra set up a surveillance camera on the second floor. On October 4, 1998, Sandra's car malfunctioned while she was driving to work. A repairman later discovered someone had poured battery acid into the gas tank. When she returned home, Bearfield had captured through her surveillance camera the apparent perpetrator walking next to her car at 3.15 a.m. Approximately four minutes later, it appeared to be the same hooded, dark-clothed figure walking towards her car, carrying something and what looks to be him attending to the gas cap. He then walks away towards the direction he came from. On October 25th, battery acid was poured into Sandra's gas tank again at approximately 2.15 a.m. The video showed a partially obstructed view of a red car passed by Sandra's home at approximately 2.11 a.m., traveling from right to left. Sandra testified that the car looked very similar to the one she knew Stephen to drive. While Sandra was on the 911 call, she ran downstairs where she was able to observe the perpetrator from the first floor front hall window. According to her testimony, the person turned his face slightly as he was leaving and she thereby was able to confirm that it was Stephen Caruso. She told the police after the incident that she recognized him by his quote shape, build, and walk. Stephen Caruso was eventually charged of property destruction for damage done to Sandra's car. During the portion of the call played to the jury, she twice, without any hesitation or expression of doubt, identified the defendant as the person who was vandalizing her car. Stephen Caruso argued to the jury that the objective measures by which Sandra could have identified the perpetrator were thin that she nearly surmised it was him based on a misperception of odd but innocent behavior, and that once having settled on the defendant, she embellished her reasons. Stephen Caruso also highlighted that Sandra referred to the perpetrator as tall while he was in fact relatively short. Finally, the defendant sought to suggest other possible suspects, including most prominently a former boyfriend, himself six feet tall, whom Sandra mentioned to the police as a possible suspect in the two tire slashings. But based on the second tire slashing and the two battery acid incidents, Stephen Caruso was charged with three counts of malicious destruction of property. On May 10, 1999, the jury found the defendant guilty of two battery acid incidents but acquitted him of the second tire slashing. The judge sentenced him to concurrent terms of 18 months in the House of Correction, six months to serve the balance suspended, and ordered him to pay $3,000 to undergo a psychiatric evaluation to stay away from Sandra Bearfield and her restaurant. Sandra lived a peaceful life up until Stephen Caruso was released. She was worried for her safety, Oftentimes, she received calls from someone breathing on the other side, which she believed was him. Sadly, in January 2000, Sandra walked out to her front porch and picked up a package addressed to her, with the sender being her sister. 
She took it to the kitchen to open it, and when she did, it exploded. The pipe bomb severed her arm and essentially disemboweled her. Stephen Caruso was brought in for questioning. He told them, Sandra, quote, caused me a lot of trouble. I don't like her. There was a time that we had feelings for each other, but now I don't like her. Stephen Caruso, 44, pleaded innocent to the murder charge in Maiden District Court, where prosecutors outlined in graphic detail the effects of the explosion. Sadly, most of her body from her neck to her knees was blown off. Police also found a book on how to build bombs in the trash at Stephen Caruso's house and detailed notes on Sandra Barefield and her family members. In his appeal, Stephen Caruso insisted he is not the person who put the mail bomb on Sandra Barefield's porch. He also cites legal reasons he should get a new trial, including a testimony of a jailhouse snitch, who Stephen says fabricated a story about him incriminating himself and Sandra Barefield's killing during a conversation the two inmates had in prison. Stephen Caruso told Dubis, the informant, that he had learned about making bombs from a friend and that he had used batteries in a pipe and that the package would only explode when it was opened due to the, quote, basic separation device. The defendant also said that he, quote, got the bomb there, that used the return address of the victim's sister in the package and that he knew the bomb would go off and would kill her. In addition, the defendant described his relationship with the victim, including the incident involving damage to the victim's vehicle, and that the victim had a video recording of him, quote, messing with her vehicle. The defendant said the victim would not go out with him and that he was mad at her and called the victim a, quote, bitch. Prosecutors, however, say that this was plenty of evidence for the jury to convict Stephen Caruso of first-degree murder, including his history of stalking her. At the time, criminally enforced restraining orders were only granted for people who were related to or dating their alleged stalker. Because Sandra Bearfield never had a relationship with Stephen Caruso, that option was not available to her. After Sandra's death, her family waged a decade-long campaign to change the law. And in 2010, the law was changed to extend criminal protection orders to victims of stalking and NSA who do not have a dating or family relationship with their perpetrator. Stephen Caruso was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my small channel out and don't forget to subscribe as well. For now, take care and stay safe.